Hallelujah. Read our scripture foundation text for this teaching we've been doing on what to do when faith seems weak and victory lost. Hallelujah. And some real egghead people who think they're really spiritual say, we don't ever go over get there in the first place. We know those are ideals, but I tell you what, people get there. You know, and it's one thing to go condemn somebody because they got in a bad place. Hello. Mm -hmm. And not give them an answer on how to get out. It's wrong. Yeah, right. You arrogant, stuck up, self full of pride individual you are. Hallelujah. Yeah, we, we, we desire people don't get there. That is, that is our purpose. We, we try to teach the Word of God in a way that people don't get in trouble. Amen. We, but when they do, there's, there's still an answer. Amen. Amen. You know, um, <clears throat> you got people going around saying, you know, we, don't, we, we, we can't sin and all this kind of stuff. No, the Bible says um, that if we sin, yeah. we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus, the, ju the righteous judge. What's that mean? That means that, you know, the ideal, you know, you know John says some real interesting stuff. In First John, they were all written to the church. Anyway, some people run around saying First John 1, 9 wasn't written to the church. They, they didn't do it. They didn't do a proper exegesis of the scriptures. You know, they just kind of, just, it just fits their mantra. No, you know, the Bible's really interesting there. John says some things in First John, he says this. He says, these things write out unto you that you sin not. But if any man sin, and we're writing so you won't sin, but if you do, you still have an advocate. <clears throat> now that's not saying go out and sin. That's saying, hey, now we're writing these things so you won't sin, but man, if you do mess up, there's still, there's still help for you. Thank God, and thank God for it. Because yeah, right. God's full of mercy and grace. Amen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Amen? Grace isn't designed to permit you to sin and get away with it. God's grace, God's empowering grace, God's strengthening grace, God's sustaining grace is given to you that, you know, to help keep you strong. But if you mess up, there's still, there's still the throne of grace to come to and get forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Get restored. Praise God. So 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God, anybody here born of God? Oh, you're born again. Have you passed from death unto life? Is the nature of the Father on the inside of you this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you a child of God, an heir of God, and a joint heir with Jesus Christ? Amen. Can somebody shout for me? Yeah. <coughs> Glory to God. got a little, little something there just wanting want to hang on. Let go. Come out in Jesus. All right. Hallelujah. I got I to gotta preach. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh. And there's something you overcome, the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. But yet we can find out, that was, as, as we all have experienced probably sometime in our life, that your faith can become weak or your victory can seem lost. Amen. Now, how do you get weak faith? You don't feed on what keeps it strong. That's real simple. You don't feed on what keeps it strong, you'll get weak. Now, let me tell you something. How many, how many in here know that you're, you had the same number of muscles as, uh, as the, the, the Mr. Universe guy. How many know that yours don't do what his does? Yeah, I'm looking around the room. Some of you are self-deluded. <laughs> thinking that yours still do. No, they don't. No, why? Well, you know, I, I, I like to tell people, <laughs> sometimes you get to the point you don't like to tell people anymore. But I, when I was, I was young, I used to, I could bench 360 as a max out, not as a, not as going there and just kind of see what I, I, I would work a pyramid up and down, and, my, and I would pinnacle at 360. And, you know, that's after I'd started. I'd start, I'd warm up at 185, and then I'd keep going up, and then max at 360, and then pinnacle back down and, and finish off at 185. I could squat 400, and I'm talking about reps, not, not one-time reps, and then deadlift 400. You know, I had big legs, big chest, big arms, you know. I mean, just, just, just be, I'm not there anymore. And I don't want to say I'm suffering from Dunlaps or chest and drawer, but you know, uh, yeah, my, I, can't, I can't even warm up at 185 anymore. I may with max there and may have to struggle. Why? Because I, did, I didn't keep doing the things I needed to do to keep strong muscles. And if you don't do the things you need to do to keep strong faith, your faith will weaken because you're just not doing what you need to do. Well, that's not a condemnation. That's a, that's a, that's a checkup point to say, okay, if my faith is weakened, it's, then I need to go back and don't do something different. 
Don't look for a new message. Don't look for a new doctrine. Don't look for a new whatever. Don't look for the hottest, latest, greatest. You're going to have to go back and do what you did in the beginning to get strong faith in the first place. Because that's how you got the strong faith in the first place. Now, I cannot sit down at night and put on the little electro pack and have my stomach muscle go, neek, 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 and, and, and get a six pack. Are you here? They advertise that thing on television. You know, it shocks your muscles, and, you know, and you're supposed to, in six weeks, have a six pack. And I'm going to tell you what, if you start out with a two liter, you're going to keep a two liter. Hello, I was with one guy one day, he said, I got a keg. Anyway, he won't talk about uh, over at the house. He's talking about it on his belly. Now, you're not going to get the, the only way that I ever got trimmed down in the waist and got was, was doing the things you have to do, the sit-ups and the crunches and the, and, the, and the things where you get up on the rack and you pull your legs up and, and all the stuff you have to do. <clears throat> I mean, you know, the, 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 you know, get the weights behind you on the bar and, and bend over and pull down. All the stuff you did, you, ha you know, if I go back and do that, guess what? I'll get to looking like I used to look. Why don't you do it? I'm lazy. I ain't going to lie to you. Just, I don't feel like doing it. But you need to. Yeah, I know I need to. But you know what? I just hadn't taken a notion to go do it. Let me say something. If you're weak in faith and you know it, and you're not getting back to where you need to, guess what? You just plumb lazy, and you know it. And you know it. That's why when somebody comes walking down the road with a new message, like they do on them television advertisements. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yeah. Lose 10 pounds in three days doing the, you know, the South Beach, not South Beach, that, that thing they drink in, in California. You know, the, the diet the movie stars use. You know? All it does is it purges your system and flushes out fl excess fluids. As soon as you start drinking again, you go, <laughs> your body will suck that water on me. I mean, like a sponge. But you'll spend $60 to try to get out of having to do what you need to know, know you need to do. Some folks spend $10,000 to go get sucking tuck. Well, they, everybody wants the fast way. Well, now, the same thing happens with the Word of God. We come into the things of God. We got a hold of the Word of faith. Found out that if you will do what the Word of God says and act on the Word and feed on the Word and do the Word, you'll grow in faith. And we did it. And then somewhere along the way, we got maybe got got sidetracked or whatever and got lazy and got, and got back. And all of a sudden, we, our, way, our faith seems weak. Our victory seems lost. And we're not willing to go back and do what we did in the beginning to get the strong faith. Now, if somebody comes along and preaches a message, you don't have to do anything except lay down and look up in the heaven and look at the finished work of Christ, and you don't have to study, and you don't have to meditate, and you don't have to go to church, and you don't have to do, and we all run, and people just run to that. I mean, you could, it's like the Bee Gees are over there singing to them, run to me. <laughs> Thank you. Hogwash. Brother Hagee used to say, Tommy Rot. Don't know what that is. I guess it's someone in the line of, talk, of hogwash. No. If you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have to go back and do what you did in the beginning. Amen? Amen? Let's get back in the Word. Get back to meditating in the Word. Get back to giving yourself to the things of God. Get back to doing the things we're talking about here, like recognize the source of the problem. Satan is the source of your, your troubles. Jesus is the source of your answers. Make sure you find promises that cover what you're asking God for. Too many people got lazy and started just asking for stuff they couldn't find Bible for. And that'll hurt. Did you know that'll hurt your faith? Well, how can I hurt my faith? Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Now, listen to me now. If you're hoping in a non-biblical way, you're not going to get an answer. It'll make your heart sick. It'll undermine you. Why? Because faith is a substance of things hoped for. And so if you're putting your hope out there in ways that are not scriptural, you're going to make your heart sick. You're going to undermine you. You're undermining yourself. That's why you've got to make sure you've got promises that cover it. Are you here? You're getting promised. If you're, you're coming up with, you know, somebody coming along and give you a word. I'm going to say, I know, can I say something? I believe in all the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. But I'll tell you, these people who run around got a word for everybody all the time, guiding everybody else's life, telling them, you know, they get a goosebump and it's a sign from heaven. Folks, you people out there doing this stuff, you need to grow up. 
The gifts of the Spirit are given by God to profit. You think it's probably, you, you gather your followings. And I, I've seen it. Listen, I've, been, I've been in this for, for decades. <coughs> and I've seen it happen time and time and time again. People prophesying who's supposed to get married and who you ain't supposed to date and who ain't right for you and who is right for you. And I haven't seen one time yet they were right in 30 years. Why? Well, because we're not led by you. We're led by the Holy Ghost. Now, a word from the Lord could be a confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know there's some stuff that I, that I know about that's going on in other places right now. And it's kind of why maybe I'm uh, inspired to say this. But I've seen people prophesy, get married. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking right now, I know of, I'm thinking of three or four per cases personally where I know this happened and they all ended up in divorce. I don't know of one where somebody gave him the word to get married. Hello? Y'all here? Mm -hmm. And it's worked out. And the pastor didn't you give Janice and Jerry a word after they said they were supposed to? I didn't. Uh, yeah, you're supposed to marry Janice. No, I wanted to. <laughs> but see, if he doesn't know it, he ain't going to have to follow it. Got these, these young guys running around thinking, thinking they're hearing from heaven. They just get, they just lead, they're trying to lead everybody else. I believe in the manifestation of the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning yeah, of spirits. Sure. I believe in the revelation gifts. Yeah. But I'm telling you, you got to walk somewhere first before you, 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 you're, uh, yeah, <coughs> you're able to do stuff like that. Because yeah. yeah. you've got to be mature enough to recognize what's the Holy Ghost and what's your feeling mm -hmm. or, or your personal dislike or like. Somebody said my daughter was complacent. Jessica. <laughs> Told somebody they, 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 that she wasn't, right, she wasn't a good girl to marry because she was complacent. Now, you know, daddy comes out every once in a while. <laughs> Hello. I mean, you want to you go on a plane and go find him and say, you know, you're kind of like they do with the cartoons. Turn them upside down and go, use it for a power driver. Bam, 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 bam. But that's not mature, so I won't do that. What? Yes, yeah, that's right. They become a false confession. You know, they, they become a word to them that's not biblical. And if you if you receive that and begin to act on it, you're acting on a non-spirit inspired thing that'll lead you in the wrong path because it's not inspired of the spirit. I mean, let me say something. If you've got a word for somebody, go find a spiritual leader. I ain't talking. Listen, if you're in a church, you go find your pastor. Mm -hmm. Let him judge it. You, if, you're, if you're somewhere else, go find the leader you're set under, not one of your buddies. Because your buddies will tell you what, they want, what you want to hear, or they'll all agree with you. Listen, I was with one guy one time. We were praying, and a candle burned down funny. And they thought that was a sign from God. That wasn't a sign from God. The wind was blowing. You know, the, the air conditioning vent was blowing on it, and it made it burn. You know how candles will burn funny if there's a little breeze on it? Start going and telling everybody, God was showing us something. God won't show you nothing. God don't use candles. God don't use your goosebumps. God don't use your hoo God don't use any of that. God speaks to the inner man. And if you've got a word, it can be judged by somebody that's a little bit older than you and more mature than you and walking in the spirit more than you. And I can tell you, whoever said that, I can tell you, my daughter is not complacent. And I'm saying it by the Holy Ghost, not just because I'm her daddy. I'm just sorry. I'm just a little bit irritated with this kind of stuff. People messing with people's lives. And this, you, you get to get in on the overflow. You can't mess with people's lives running around saying you got a word. You're right. Amen. Amen. And then trying to mess with everything in their life. There's an arrogance that goes with that. There's just this, this, this without pale. It's like those guys used to run around about, about 22 years old, 23 years old, back in the day when uh, Brother Summerall and Brother Hagen and Brother Osteen were still around, and they were the new, they were the Joshua generation, and their old guys were dying off, and they were taking over. Not anytime soon, pal. You're 22, and you think you're going to be where Brother Hagen is, or Brother Osteen was, or Brother Summerall was? Hogwash, Tommy Rot, bunk. What's that got to do with this morning's message? Um, be sure the promises of God cover what you're asking for. Find Bible, not brother. 
Find Bible for what you're asking for, not brother's opinion. Hello. Glory to God. Be sure you're not living in sin. There you go. Sometimes you've got people prophesying over people, and they're out running around smoking dope, shooting up, drinking, uh, sleeping with people, and all this kind of stuff, and they're they, they spiritual. Yeah. Sincerely desire to, I'm, I'm moving on. I'm getting off of that soapbox. Sincerely desire to benefit. Ask God in faith, nothing wavering. Do not tolerate a fault to the contrary. And then never today, count the thing done. Will y'all forgive me for kind of going off that little tangent there? But I wanted to speak to somebody. Hallelujah. You, you, you people, I can't get away from it. God wants us to flow in the Spirit. But go follow those who have a track record of knowing what they're doing. Yeah. Amen. See, a lot of times young people get together. And I remember because when I first got saved, we had, we had this group in our church. Was called, we'd have a cottage prayer meeting. Now, I was real young and Lord, I didn't know any better. I was going. But you know what I found out in about three months? They're the big, biggest bunch of squirrels I'd ever met in my life. Every week we got together. And we got in the prayer chair, and everybody in the room prophesied over everybody in the room. Everybody had a word for everybody. Well, the Bible says that it'd be about two or three at the most. Have a tongue, have the interpretation, and if anybody else has anything, let them hold their peace and let it be given by the others and let everybody else judge. No, we all had the problem. We just, we put them in the chair, we line up. Yay, yay, let's say it the Lord. Okay. Your turn. Yay, let's say it the Lord. Your turn. Yay, that's said the Lord. And they were all good. Yeah. You're going to travel to the world. You're going to cover the waters. You're going to do this. You're going to reach mouth up. Everybody got the same word. <laughs> By everybody. But we were, we, were, we were radical for Jesus. We were, now listen, zeal. I'm, I forget my sermon. This is stirred in me last night while I was sleeping. I tried to do my sermon. I knew better. Zeal is a great thing. And I'm excited when young people have a lot of zeal. And they want to do things for God. But at the same time, understand that there are seasoned ministers in your life for a reason. To temper the zeal so that it is productive and profitable and not damaging. You, gotta, you, get, you give somebody a, a 50 caliber machine gun and don't teach them how to use it, and they can fire that thing off, baby, and they can, I mean, they can, but if they don't know how to temper and use it right, you can cause more damage than good any day of the week. You can take out your whole platoon and never hit the enemy. Amen. So the gifts of the Spirit and flowing in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit, <clears throat> I love the zeal of young people. They keep us on fire. They keep us stirred up. But at the same time, the seasoning of, of, of elder ministers is what you need in your life. And, and see, what they'll say about them is they don't have the revelation. They're dried up. They don't, they don't, you know, no, 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 no. They've walked some things out, and they know, now know how to, you know, tell Dad Hagen he was, he was dried up and, 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 and uh, you know, whatever. Man, he's still, he's, I, I, I sat right there, and... <clears throat> even in his last full meeting here over in Winston Salem in 2003, then he did camp meeting, but his last full full meeting, he, he started on, on one in September, had to come home, but um, or end of August of 2003, but September, May of 2003 was his last full campaign. And I'm going to tell you, he still flowed in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Ta best teaching on, the, on faith. I mean, he was, you could tell he was getting older. You could tell something was going on. But I'm going to tell you, I, I told my wife after that, man, I said, that's the best teaching on faith I've ever heard him do. Told the same stories, sh shared the same scriptures, but there was a depth to it. But even in the manifestations of the Spirit, he was still flowing in the Holy Ghost. No, the seasoned minister, if there's, you know, and listen, you can get some people who just get dried up. But not, we're not talking about that. We're talking about seasoned ministries. Not ones that are two years older than you. And you're 23, 24, and 25. You know everything. No, you got zeal. Thank God for your zeal. We love your zeal. We love your desire to, you know, and I'm talking about you here too. You, we love your desire to flow with the Holy Ghost. But let people older than you, before you start messing people's lives up, 
Just, just because God uses you to lay hands on the sick and get somebody healed don't mean you're a prophet to, to tell everybody what they're supposed to do. Doesn't mean you're qualified. Amen? Hello? I'll tell you something else. It takes, it, for, for walking, you may be called to be a prophet. I, I, I'll tell you, there's, there's, a, there's a friend, well, Joe Morris, you could see it on him for years before he fully stepped into that office. Now, I, I, I knew Joe. We went to Ramah together. He was 17 years old when he got to Ramah. <coughs> um, after we graduated, I lost track with him about five or six years after I graduated, or four years or so. He, he was traveling with Ed Dufresne. Ed Dufresne came to our church in Greenville, and I'm sitting in the office, and here goes him walking into it. I hadn't seen him since we graduated. There was no Facebook back then. You lose track of people in a hurry. And so we, we reconnected, and then when I came past from here, when he started coming to our church, you could see that that was on him, but he wasn't walking in it fully. Why? He wasn't ready. Now he walks in it. He's matured and stepped into it. And, you know, and so when we have a zeal for the things of God, and the gifts, well, I just got to let it out. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Hello? God don't make you do anything. And it can be like fire shut up in your bones, but if it ain't the right time, don't do it. Let me give you an example. Um, about 19, I guess 98, somewhere around 98, 99, we were at Winter Bible Seminar in Tulsa. And uh, I know I've told this story before, but for the benefit of where I'm in right now, we're going to have to change the title. This is not going to be what, what point, the, whatever point of what to do when faith seems weak and victory lost. We were, we were sitting over on the, on the um, that's, well, if you're on the platform, and you guys know, Raymond's a really big building. Yeah, the, the footprint of the, of the church is the acre. That's the footprint of the church. So, and half of that almost is, is sanctuary up, up in the front. Okay? So, if we're, but I'm sitting over here, you know, stood in line for six hours, got a seat, got in there. You know, in, in those days, I mean, you know, Dad was still ministering. We, we fill the building up with overflow. So, you'd have 7,000, 8,000 people at Winter Bible, sometimes 9,000 because they were all in the overflow rooms and stuff because the sanctuary so would see about 6,600. But Copeland was on the platform, and I mean, you know, all these different name guys are up there on the, on the, in the, choir, the choir loft on the platform. And I'm sitting out there, man. Now, listen, I'm a young man. You know, this is, I've been in the ministry, you know, 18, 19 years. Trained at Raymond, part of RMAI. Buddy, really, really close with Buddy Harrison. Buddy, Buddy really ministered to me, Janie and I, as we were, as we were coming up in the Lord, as after we graduated from Raymond. Really close with Brother Buddy. Love, I mean, just, just, a, just a wonderful man of God different people in my lives. I mean, I'd, I'd ha I sat at dinner with, with uh, Lester Summerall and C.M. Ward and Buddy Harrison and Dennis Burke. And I mean, you, we just kind of go through a litany of ministers. <coughs> they would come into our church there and just sit at dinner with them. All right? And I, and I know, and listen, I'm going to tell you, I knew the Holy Ghost. I flowed in the gifts. And I'm sitting out here in the church auditorium, 7,000 people around, and the word of the Lord come unto me saying, and it was for Kenneth Copeland. Now, if I listen to what people say, I was going to run up on that platform and giving it to him. Boy, I mean, it was all over me. I'm telling you, I was stirred. Mm -hmm. I could have stood up and said, yeah, the Lord says to Brother Copeland. Probably about six ushers would have tackled me. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you don't mess up. You know, listen, you understand, in a meeting that big, and I'm standing out there in the middle of four, four five thousand, six thousand people, and I'm trying to holler loud enough to over, override everything in that building and get Brother Copeland to hear it. Guess what ain't going to happen? Ain't gonna, Why did the word of the Lord come unto you saying? I'll tell you in a minute. And I'm sitting there, boy, that thing's, and I'm just sitting there, and, I'm, and it's just coming all over me. And, come, and, I, and, and then Brother Hagen on the platform turns around and said, Kenneth, come here. Brother Copeland comes down. And he begins to minister to him. Guess what he gets to minister to him? Exactly what was all over me. I mean, it was all over me. But Brother Hagin began to minister. Now, two things here. Number one, be Brother Hagin sitting in the office in, in, in a higher office than I was with more season, more maturity. Brother Copeland was much, much more likely to receive it. So he should receive it no matter who gives it. Oh, Lord. Grow up. You think you know everything. Think you got a grip on everything. And I'm sitting there saying, "Now, Lord, that was all over me, and, and I and I, I, I it was it, it's all I could do is keep from doing it." The spirit of the prophet subject to the prophet. 
Why did you do that? He said, I just wanted to teach you in a deeper realm, in a deeper manner, my voice. See, when Brother Hagin started giving that word to Brother Copeland, I knew I had heard the Holy Ghost. It trained me in the Spirit. Some things God's doing is teaching you, and it's not for you to do anything with. It's just simply so he's keep teaching you. Amen? Now, some things are. Some things are, you just dream it up in your head. Now, let me, let me go back. I'll go back to Ramah. Now, I'm going to tell something I never told anybody. Did y'all hear? Never shared it with anybody. But uh, we had some friends. You know, this, this guy and this girl were dating. And I was, I was praying, and I was sure I had a word. And I called and said, I got a word for you. Come over to our apartment. She came over. I said, the Lord says, and I began. And she stopped. When I got done, she looked at me and said, I don't, I don't receive any of that. None of that bears witness to my spirit. And whoa. I'm the Rhema student, man of faith and power. I know what I'm talking about. Now, I don't receive any of that. You know, guess what? I was wrong. I just got to dreaming it up. I'm glad she did that. Thank God she didn't listen to me and run off and do what I said. Hello. Are you here? I said, I was young and dumb. I was zealous. I had zeal. You know, thank God I went and got in a good church, sat under a pastor. There was safety and growing in the things of the Spirit. And you, you, you people out there on the Internet, you here in the church, you think you know so much you're going to have your little, have your meetings without any, without any real authority. Just somebody that's out running around, with, it's not, they're not even under authority. And if they're under authority, it's somebody who's not under authority. You know, you can get a whole bunch of renegades together and everybody, nobody's under authority. Hello. That went over big. And they, they, they draw people unto themselves by being everybody's Holy Ghost. Wisdom. Yeah, I'll tell you. People come to me and I'll say, Pastor, what do you think about it? I say, well, what, what, does the, what does your heart tell you? What does, it, what does the Word say? And then we'll go from there. We're going to find out, first of all, what, 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 you, what, you, what you believe you have in your heart. Well, I don't really know. What, what does the Word say? I may know what they're supposed to do. Many times I do. But it's not my job to tell them until I can get them to see it themselves. Hello. Once they see, oh, yeah, you know what, that's exactly, that's what the Word, then I can stop stepping there. And it won't be me. It'll be the Word and the Holy Ghost talking to them. Now, I believe that, you know, we could have a service and I call people out and speak to them by the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe that. But when you're doing it all the time to everybody and every, you're, you're everybody's guide and, and somebody, you know, somebody does this, and, oh, I got, and you go, I think the Lord's. And you, you know, you better watch, make sure it's just not your flesh. Well, I got the goosebump. I've had demon spirits come into a room and get goosebumps. Hello? I'm telling you. Same kind of goosebumps I got when, that, when the, spirit, the, the Spirit of God was there. Now, the difference was there was the agitation with the, with the demonic spirit. And there was peace with the Holy Ghost. But you give yourself over to the wrong thing, you won't be able to tell the difference. Hello? The Bible says people entertain angels unawares. What's that? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I think that's because people are spiritually, spiritually non-discerning. If you're, if you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, you would know an angel was there. Beware, you know, be careful, because some people have entertained angels unawares. I believe people have entertained demon spirits unawares. People give themselves over to demon spirits and speak by those spirits. Give people counsel that's not of the Spirit of God. Yeah, but God used me to do this. Well, I'm glad. Hello? I'm glad he did. But I've seen people minister one night in the spirit and the next night in the flesh. Because that's what the crowd wanted. Or it satisfied their ego. People, we're at a point in time in the things of God, we can't afford to be messing up and controlling other people's lives with our desires and what we think should be and calling it the Holy Ghost. If it's the Holy Ghost, it'll bear witness. And I tell people, if this doesn't bear witness with your spirit, don't you do anything with it. 
Don't you go do something I say about this. If, I, if, I, if I'm ministering to you and I say, you know, don't you go do it because I said it. It has to bear witness with your spirit. The problem with no authority is this. Everybody's trying to make everybody happy. Don't want to upset their friends. You know? They're, they're complacent. Let me tell you something about my daughter. Daughters. <coughs> For somebody to say that, that Jessica is complacent is, is about, you got a devil talk with your ear. She grew up on this, and she hasn't ever turned away from it. She's deep. And she didn't go to Raymond to join some prayer group and hook up with some people who always want to, you know, have something other than what Raymond's doing. She went out there to get what God sent her out there to get, and she's, on, she's focused on that. She's not focused on anything else. If they don't come to your meeting, doesn't mean that they're not spiritual. Hello. Amen. And just like that, they've sat at the feet of a number of ministers. They've come to our church and sat at the table while we talked about the things of God and about the Hagans and about you know, the, 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 you know, their, their walk with, you know, being with Brother Hagan, Dad Hagan, Pastor Hagan. I mean, having people in our homes and eating dinner with them, talking about the, the things of God and, and the history of the church and things like that. I guess that's how our kids grew up. And they're, they're walking in a depth and in a place. That just because they don't come to some little, you know, prayer group meeting that somebody has doesn't mean they're not spiritual. Hello? And for you to say so, it shows your immaturity. Hello? Amen. Just because people don't do what you want them to do don't mean that they're not spiritual. Amen? Amen. We're having a prayer group at my house tonight. Come on over. If you don't come, oh, they're not spiritual. What makes them not spiritual? Maybe they're home. God's God. Maybe God's talking to them about things in private. They need to be with the. They need to be alone by themselves. You know, I guess Jesus wasn't, wasn't spiritual because he would do himself. Went and prayed by himself. So, thank God for zeal. Thank God for desire. But grow up. Understand your zeal and desire doesn't qualify you to lead everybody else's life and call it the Holy Ghost. I wasn't planning on doing this, but hallelujah. I had no intention of doing this. But I tell you, we, we've got to learn the ways of the Spirit the right way. We had a meeting, and everybody was slain in the Spirit. I've seen people slain in the Spirit. You know why we have catchers in prayer lines? Does anybody know? It's not for people who get slain in the Spirit. It's for those who aren't, who just fall. I'll be honest with you. If they're slain in the spirit, they won't get hurt. The Holy Ghost can set them down and pick them up. We put catchers up there to catch the ones that aren't. Now, I don't mean that to make you back off or whatever. But, you, know, you know, we want people to yield to the spirit. But I'm telling you, that, that Brother Hagin talked about it. We had one woman one time. He laid hands on her. She went back hit her head. Remember, you used to have pews with the end caps. Yeah. So her head went back, you saw like a firecracker went up. Her head hit thing that went kapow. Fell on the floor. Nobody messed with her. A few minutes she got up later, dancing in the Holy Ghost, and not a thing wrong with her head. Because she was in the spirit. Hello. Now I, I know in some churches they got the they got the, the ladies who run around and put circles around the other ladies. So they can dance and go crazy and not run into anybody. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? What do they call these girls? Anybody know, Janice? The ladies that circle all the, the, the people when they're dancing. and the, Huh? They have a name. <laughs> they have a name. I don't know. <laughs> all right. She's telling me what kind of churches that was in. Pentecost churches that you run. <laughs> Hallelujah. So. Amen. Being in the Spirit, we, we've got to learn to understand what the Spirit is. Yeah. Now, the Spirit of God is going to be profitable. God's not going to set you up as somebody's God. And when you've got people that everybody has to go to to get that word for their direction of their life, that's wrong. Because relationships, and it, keep, it, it divides people from the true God, the Holy Ghost. 
Because, yeah, it is immaturity. But they put, your, your people will pass themselves off. And, and listen, people who set themselves up that are wrong. They're just giving their opinions. Amen. We don't need your opinions. We need the manifestations of the Spirit that are true manifestations of the Spirit. And if it's truly the Holy Ghost, it'll bear witness with those who are seasoned and those who know what they're talking about, those who've been down the road a few times, who've made some of those same mistakes and learned from them, like me. Amen. You know, my number one job, Brother Hagin was teaching this about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Do you know the number one job of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers is to preach and teach the Word of God? See, we think the prophets are supposed to go around and prophesy all the time. No, his number one job is to preach or teach the Word of God. Now, he may preach it and teach it from a prophetic anointing, and he, he may be manifestations of the Spirit where he prophesies or, or gives words of wisdom or words of knowledge or has discerning of spirits in operation and, and functioning with the gift of prophecy at the same time. But I'll tell you what, that's not the main thrust of their ministry, to preach and teach the Word of God. We are to bring people into a relationship with God the Father through the Word of God, the leadership and guidance of the Holy Ghost, and to teach them to stand on their own two feet, not to depend on us. Now, people used to do stuff all the time. I remember was one, one of our guys in our church back home. There was this woman. She, called, she thought he was dial a prophet. She'd call him one, two, three o'clock in the morning and say, Brother John, what's the word? I got one for you. Read your Bible. <laughs> Click. They call back. Pick it up. What's the word? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Click. Amen. We need to stop looking for words. Now listen, we need to stop looking for words and we need to stop having people trying to give words. God wants to do something, God will do, let God do it. Yes, he will. Amen. Just because you got a goose bump and a, and a chill and a thought pass through your head doesn't mean it's anointed. Doesn't mean it's God. And if you did get any of those things and some kind of something came by, you need to sit back and pray it out and see what God's doing. And I'll tell you what, if, you just still don't, if you're still not sure, especially when, it's, when it comes into terms of guidance, particularly when it comes into the realm of guidance, what people should or shouldn't do, who they should uh, be with, who they shouldn't be with, who, who, where they're supposed to live, where they shouldn't live, what church they're supposed to any realm, Anything has to do with the realm of guidance, you better know for sure that sure, sure, sure that it's God. And one of the ways to find that is to go submit it to somebody who's more mature than you. And I'm not talking about somebody who doesn't have authority over them. You go submit it to, the, to people who, who sit in authority <coughs> and who will judge it righteously and justly and not tell you what you want to hear. Particularly in the realm of, why, why particularly in the realm of guidance? Because if they listen to what you say and they miss God, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. I'm under grace. I don't give a rip what you're under. You're in trouble. Because if you cause them to stumble or to fail or to fall away, woe be to anyone who causes these, these to stumble. So, woe. <laughs> and you better woe. In that realm of guidance, you better be extremely careful before you open your mouth and speak. Because you're messing with another person's life. And the, res the, 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 the fallout from misguiding an individual can be greater than you could even fathom. What if your guidance causes someone not to do something God called them to do that was going to get the next Billy Graham saved or the next T.L. Osborne saved? And because of your interjection and your interference, they didn't walk in that place. You've got to be careful before you start telling people what they should and shouldn't do. And don't cover it. Well, I'm not telling you what to do, brother. I just sense. That's the same thing. You can dress it up any way, but if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. I this guy done it for the other day. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably not a duck. You're just messing with people. 
You can dress it up any way you want to dress it up. But if you're interjecting guidance under the, the auspices that you're hearing from heaven, ever, ever how subtly you do it, you better know for sure you're hearing from God. And have somebody judging it that knows what they're doing. You don't want four people who've never worked on a car in their life try to fix your car and they look at each other for the opinion on how to fix it. Well, what do you think? Well, I think y'all do this. Okay. Why did you do that in my car? Well, you know, I asked for the opinion of my friends. They all thought this. What do your friends know about cars? Nothing. Why did you ask them? Why didn't you go ask the mechanic who's worked on it for 30 years? The one time we took our, our van in <coughs> over, over the dealership here in town, and, uh, and this young kid, I mean, you know, he had obviously had just graduated from auto mechanic school. He rolls out from under there, and he makes this statement. I ain't never seen anything like that in all my life. Well, I'm impressed. <laughs> what are you, 21? <laughs> now, if, if the guy over there I saw walking to the car like this came over there and crawled under there and said, I ain't never seen anything like this in all my life, then I would be impressed. But that young whippersnapper, I ain't seen nothing like this all my life. Well, live a little bit longer. You probably, now you can add that to your repertoire. So that's, why, that's why, God, that's why we're, some, we're set. Obey those with the rule on you. Give honor unto those, give double honor unto those who, well, actually give honor unto those who labor, especially those who labor in word and deed. Recognize the authorities and accept their input. <clears throat> There's this thing going around somewhere now about this mystic thing where everybody's supposed to come and learn all these deep, deep spiritual things, and it is new agey, but they're calling it Christian. And, and, and got people going around saying, well, the instructors at our Bible school just haven't had the revelation yet. You got like 350 years of, of experience among the staff, and they haven't got a revelation yet? Just because they, they, they don't agree with what you're doing? You young whippersnapper? Hello? Again, thank God for the zeal. We appreciate the zeal. We want, don't want to put the zeal out, but let the, let the maturity... Let the mentors mentor you and, and temper that excitement with wisdom so that it becomes very productive and very efficient and a great blessing. Amen. Amen. Now, I know we got young people in here. We've got people on the Internet. I just, I just had to let that out this morning. So tonight we will not pick up with where I left off this morning because it's healing and communion rally. So next Sunday... We will conclude the series on what to do with faith scenes week and victory loss. Today you got um, how to use zeal and not be stupid. I guess you can call it that, Brother Bill. We want you to use your zeal. We don't want you to be stupid. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't want to mess people's lives up. Amen. And let me say something. When God's using you in the gifts of the Spirit, it's not about you. I said, it's not about you. If God is using you. He said that the gifts of the Spirit are, are given to every man to profit with all. Amen. It's about who's getting ministered to. It ain't about making you look like some great one. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I was going to close right there. I had, when I went to Bible school, I had roommates. One was living in sin and would not, never repented, never got it straight. There was a bitterness towards a, a family member. They never overcame, and they died about three years ago. The other roommate was, was I mean, our, our apartment basically worshipped him. He was the deep one. He was going to be teaching at our Bible school before the year was over, their first year at the school. That's what he told us. Now, here's the bad part. I was so young and dumb in the Lord, I believed him. I'm telling you, he's, the Lord showed him he's going to be teaching here before the year's over. 
We, we were at camp meeting that year, and, uh, and in that camp meeting, Brother Hagin, the Spirit came Brother Hagin, he stood at the podium and couldn't talk. That would happen occasionally with him. I mean, just the Spirit would overcome him, and somebody else would take over and run the service. He couldn't do anything. Well, from then on, that's what my roommate would do. You'd come into the apartment, he'd sit. We, they had bought this, one, him and the other roommate had bought this wicker chair with that big fan back. Yeah. He'd be sitting in that chair. <laughs> you'd come and say, hey, so-and-so. The other roommate would go, he's in the spirit. He can't talk. <laughs> okay. And he just did it all the time. You walk in. All the people would come in and say, hey, so-and-so. And the roommate would go, he's in the spirit. He can't talk. <laughs> then he started coming out and riding the school, me in my car, getting across. Hey, morning, what's that going on? How you doing? All the way to school. I started leaving him. I was riding by myself anyway. <laughs> Let's be real honest with you. I'm not going to lie down the road with somebody going. <laughs> and if you did talk, there's my angel. My angel's standing right over there. My angel's right here. He could only talk when he saw his angel. <laughs> Divorced. Yeah. Falling out of the ministry. Got into error so many times, false doctrine, before he fell out of the ministry. It wasn't funny. Wouldn't listen to those who had authority in their life. Buddy told me one time, but I was trying to help him. Came to church where we were. I said, Brother Buddy, so and so is out here. He, and I, and, I, and he, said, he said, How's he doing? I said, He's not doing good, Brother Buddy. I said, you know, He's in a mess. He said, Bring him in. He can't counsel him, talk to him, told him what to do. He said, he said If I do what I tell him to do, I can help him. Did it for about three months and quit and left him because he couldn't, he couldn't submit. I talked to Buddy later. He said, he said he wouldn't listen. Wouldn't listen. Well, that pride gets, gets, can get in you young. Hey, young people, that's what you've got to watch out for. Yeah. You misinterpret the zeal and God using you to do something as, a, as his giving his blessing to everything you do. And you just don't understand. He's, be, he's using you even when your you're, you're, you're zealousness and your immaturity, but he expects you to grow. Now, I was probably considered the unspiritual roommate because I didn't act weird. As a matter of fact, when I, about, about halfway through my, my time there at school, I just went and found different friends. I did. I, I said, I'm thinking, these guys are nuts. Rudy Vertochnik was one of my best friends. Joe Morris. I had, I had other people just became very dear friends that I spent time with. And hung around that, that, that weren't crazy. <laughs> that loved the Lord. Brother Rudy went home to be with the Lord about 1989. He was a dear friend. Loved Brother Rudy. And he did things for God. Hallelujah. But he wasn't weird. He was bold, but he wasn't weird. Joe was a prophet. I tell you, Joe Morris was a prophet. But he didn't act. He, he doesn't act. If he comes to ministers, you, he doesn't go, oh, I am a prophet. Bow down before the prophet of God. Matter of fact, he wouldn't call himself that. He will not call himself that. He just won't do it. That's right. And here I am. Now, I'm not bragging on me, but I'm still in the ministry. I haven't fallen out. I haven't gotten weird. And I was considered the unspiritual one. Now, you don't have to be weird Matter of fact, a lot of times when you're doing that kind of stuff, you're just trying to draw attention to yourself, make people think you're something you're not. Set back. Relax. Get what you went to school for. Get what you're supposed to get out of a church you're working in. Don't try to take over. Don't try to be the head when you're not. Just because the pastor uses you doesn't mean that he's trying to give you the church. Hello? Yeah, right. I know a church here in town a number of years ago uh, that the pastor was out of town, and he let another minister fill his pulpit for two Sundays. And on the second Sunday, that guy got up and said, well, uh, next week I'm starting a church over at such and such a uh, hotel, and uh, anybody wants to come on, come on over. And the pastor did not have him preach at his church so he could start a church out of his church. Well, God led him. God did lead you doodly squat. Your old flesh led you, and you didn't know the difference. Just because you were light don't mean you're anointed. Mm -hmm. About seven years later, his church got completely blown out of the water by an associate pastor. 
You don't think you sow seed and reap? I can show you story after story after story after story. And I'm not talking about from the Bible. I'm talking about people who did stuff and they reaped a harvest that caused destruction. And here's the sad thing. Yes, it brought, brought destruction to them as a minister, but the sheep were scattered abroad and damaged, backslid, died. And these are all things set in people's lives and their youth they didn't deal with because they wouldn't submit when they were young and grow when they were young and mature so they could be a blessing. We want to flow in the Spirit. We want to be a blessing with the Spirit. We don't want to be a curse. Amen. And uh, I guess we go at this point. Enough said. Actually, if I was in a Bible school class, I'd keep right on going and probably get a little more. But I'm not. You're my church. But you are my Bible school class. <laughs> Those out there on the Internet. Hallelujah. You love the pastor? Yeah. Amen. So, well, pastor, I'm not doing any of that. Great. We got younger people in here that, that God's stirring in their hearts and ministry things in their hearts. We want to keep them on track where they have zeal and maturity and wisdom at the same time. Amen. So they're blessed. We want everybody to be a blessing.